All right, what's up, fantasy football today? Viewers, listeners, welcome to Twitch time, our debut here on Twitch. Thank you very much for being here. I'm Adam Azer. Jamie just waved. Hi, Jamie. Were you waving at me or the? I'm assuming you were waving at me. Hi, Jamie. No, I'd rather punch you in the face. So. Uh, you could do Jeez. that. We're Same. Uh, Dave, please don't punch me in the face if everybody else is. Never, never. I would just give you a big old bear hug, Adam. Thank you very much. All right, I've got the green green screen behind me. I'm going to adjust it so my face is actually on camera. I want to welcome everybody here, and I want to encourage you to hit that follow button. Just hit that follow button and join uh, join us here on Twitch. And thank you so much for, for hopping on. So we're here for an hour, and we're going to talk about the NFL draft. And, of course, we're going to talk about Rob Gronkowski. In fact, we just recorded a bonus podcast talking about Gronkowski going to the Bucks. Jamie, you weren't on that, so I'm going to give you the first word. Now, if... Let's say O.J. Howard gets traded to the Colts. Who would you rather have, O.J. Howard or Rob Gronkowski this year? It's a good one. Uh, Gronk. Unless Jack Doyle died. Oh, that's no. Heath, who would you rather have in that scenario? That's a good question. Who's a bigger threat to red zone targets, Jack Doyle or Cameron Brait? Um, I would probably still have Gronk, though I'd be skeptical of either one of them being a top eight tight end. And Dave outside with the beautiful palm trees. Uh, what? <laughs> Nothing. <I'm- laughs> nah, Gronk, man. Nothing, I'm taking Gronk. This is, this isn't that hard. And by the way, how interesting would it be if, if the bucks roll out week one in a, in a two tight end set with Gronk and OJ Howe, along with Godwin Evans, Brady, Jonathan Taylor, revamped O-line. Nice. I think the question is, are they going to get more in return for O.J. Howard than they gave up to get Gronk? Because they're trading O.J. Howard. That would be a fourth-round pick. You know what? So here's, That would be here's, something if that's what they got. With, with Twitch, obviously. We want you to ask us your questions. If I'm looking to my left, it's because I'm looking at the, the, uh, the chat room. Um, so I'm not trying to ignore people. But we're gonna Maybe just, you should move your background a little more so that you don't have to look to your left. What? what I don't know what that. <laughs> Just make sure you don't pick your nose like you do in every podcast. Pick, no, um, some podcasts are on video, Jamie, so I'm used to this. Now I'm going to uh, read some comments as they come in. Uh, Dave looks so boss. How about that, Dave? You look boss. Thanks. If guys, guys, beer. Um, Lamar Jackson, Madden curse. We can talk about that, but give us your Gronk uh, questions right now. If you uh, if you so choose, anything you want about Gronkowski or the NFL draft, Jamie, what's your overall level of enthusiasm for Rob Gronkowski? Last time we saw him, he was barely a top twelve tight end. He played thirteen games in two thousand eighteen. He didn't really have that good of a season. So, what do you think right now? I'm not overly excited, but I think it's a smart move by the Bucks if he wants to play and you get him for you know a fourth round pick is is, is fair enough compensation. You know, I think the thing about the Patriots is if he had stayed with them, he would have put them over the salary cap. So that was part of the reason why they unloaded him maybe a little bit cheaper than you, than you think. But um, I mean, you said it, you know, he's, he's a year removed. He's, he's certainly got to have to put on some weight. Um, You know, if you've seen him recently, he doesn't look, you know, NFL ready for that position. Um, The, uh, the, the nice thing about it though, and and, and I think this is going to matter a lot. um, He has a history with, with Brady. And with an off season of that's probably going to be short to some extent and not having to get the familiarity with his two new receivers, uh, there's going to be certain plays that matter to, to Brady with Gronk. The other side of it is, is that Bruce Arians track record with tight ends is terrible. So, you know, I was on uh, a bunch of HQ program programming already with uh, Pete Frisco. And he said that Bruce Arians told him, Hey, don't forget. I, I had Heath Miller once upon a time. Um, I don't know if that matters, but, you know, he had a, a pretty athletic <laughs> tight end that, he stud that, we, Heath Miller. Yeah. that we thought could make some plays. So, I mean, Heath Miller back in the day was a, was a top 12 tight end, uh, at least Houston. that one year in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. But I, I think, you know, it's, um, it, it's, you know, he's in that, he's in that group of guys that there's no guarantee for me. Um, you know, he's, he's barely going to be a top 10 tight end. And I think when I do my next round of sleepers, breakouts and busts, he'll be on the bus list just because of the hype that'll be surrounding him. All right, let me read some questions here. Uh, Dave, what happens to Gronk's 24-7 title? Who cares? <laughs> okay, fine. I'll ask a different uh, one. You know what you should happen to the it? question cares. What do you mean? We're supposed to be here's answering what, people's here's questions what, here. Here's what happens to it. They find a, a, 
dumpster that's caught on fire and they throw that thing into the dumpster and we never speak of it again. Well, isn't isn't WWE taking place in Orlando? Maybe that's nope, why yes. he's trying to camp. That's right. He could, he's going to be a two-sport right, athlete. He can do both at the same time. He's a regular Deion Sanders. Uh, Eth, where is your beer? And what is uh, how does this affect Brady's value? Two separate questions. I'll give them both to Heath. Oh, there we go. Here's my beer. And I moved Brady up one spot. We talked about it on the podcast. He's in kind of a weird spot because – for me now, he's clearly at the top of the old man tier. I've got him ahead of Drew Brees, ahead of Matt Ryan, ahead of all the old men. But it's hard to move him ahead of Kyler Murray or Josh Allen or Deshaun Watson. So he's going to remain in that eight to nine range. And it's really hard to imagine how he would move from there. There's still plenty of risk. Okay. Um, so you have him ahead of Matt Ryan. You had him Heath ahead of Matt Ryan before the Gronk acquisition, right? I believe I had him one spot behind Ryan. I think Ryan's the only person that I moved him over when wow. this happened. Okay. Dave, Jamie, how about you? Brady versus Matt Ryan. Brady. Uh, I'll take Brady. I'm, I'm with Heath. I'll take him over Drew Brees as well. So he's moving up two spots for me. Does okay. that make him seventh for you, Jamie? Uh, eight. He's 10 right now. All right. I got Brady eighth. I got Brees one spot ahead of him still, but that's almost my legacy. But I'm, I'm with Heath. I would take uh, Josh Allen um, and Kyle Murray over him. Gronk or Evan Ingram? This comes from Twitch. Half PPR, Gronk or Evan Ingram? Ingram. Ingram. Same downside, more upside. Jamie, I'll give you this one from Chris Carmichael. What do the Bucks do at running back now? I mean, they're, they're going to probably address the position in, in the draft, I would think. Um, you know, just a matter of when. Um, it's not going to be round one. You know, they just don't – are not in a spot to take a running back, you know, if they were going to maybe trade back into round one. But – you know, you're hearing uh, Edwards Hilaire pretty, you know, favorably with the Bucks. So that'd be a fun pairing. I don't think, uh, you know, we've talked about this a lot on, on the podcast that I don't think anybody's coming in there to be the unquestioned lead back. I, I think if they do spend a second round pick on on Taylor or Swift or, or Dobbins, that's the best running back there. But I don't think it's a situation where whichever running back they draft, however high, is necessarily pushing Ronald Jones completely to the bench at the start of the season. That could happen by the end of the season. All right, and if you're watching us on Twitch, well, anybody who's watching this. How one, else would they be watching us? As opposed to watching us on uh, HQ. Yeah, well, maybe you're in our house. Or you're in, we, um, we, do these, we, do these, uh, we do these Zooms without Twitch, right? I mean, we just podcast, then we Zoom, then we go do other stuff for our jobs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hit that follow button. Hit that follow button, baby, and uh, we appreciate you being here. I'm going to ask one more question about Gronk, and then we will move on. And it's about... Uh, it's about the wide receivers. You've had a few people ask about this. How do you think this affects Mike Evans and Chris Godwin? And by the way, OJ Howard and Cameron Brate, they combined for, I think it was like 110 targets last year. So they did throw to the tight end. Uh, they combined for something like eight or nine targets inside the five yard line. Uh, so, or inside the 10 yard line, pardon me. Is that Howard, the green real? zone or the gold zone? That's the green zone. The gold zone would be inside the five-yard line. But it's not like the tight ends were completely uninvolved. It's not like you know both of them are going away. But you know, Heath, what do you think? Uh, how does this affect Evans and Godwin? It's not good. Um, if Gronk plays 13 or 14 games, it's going to mean fewer targets and almost certainly fewer touchdowns for both Godwin and Evans. So I... I dropped Evans more than I dropped Godwin, but I've got Godwin as the number one wide receiver on this team because he runs the type of routes that Tom Brady more typically targets. Um, I still think Godwin is a, a top six wide receiver in any format. Evans, for me, is now outside of my top 12, which he's going to be drafted as a top 12 guy. It just means I'm not going to get him. Anyone else before we move on? I don't think I'm going to move them very much. Um, I, I might move Godwin down maybe a spot or two just because he's uh, in PPR. He's ahead of, I think, maybe Tyreek Hill. At this point, I'd probably take Hill. Um, okay. Uh, so on Twitch, J-Dogs says, you guys look nothing like I thought you would, you would have uh, expected much nerdier. And then Go Buffs 86 said, nerdier than that? Seriously? So, uh, they're, they're talking about you, Adam. A hundred percent. All right. 
And uh, don't you tell me which zone is for loading and which zone is for unloading. That is a very good reference to airplane. So let's talk about the uh, NFL draft now on that note as uh, Schwanky Trey, Schwanky Trey wants to know if the Pats are going to trade up for Tua. I don't know if they're going to trade up for Tua, but Dave, who do you think the Pats are going to get at quarterback? It's an excellent question, Adam and Schwanky. I think, I think that uh, they could be in the Jordan Love business. I think they've got enough ammo to move up from 23 to get him. What's Love got to do with it? Do do you think that they have enough ammo to move up from 23 into the top eight to go and get – what was that ding? That was Jamie. Yeah, I I think you were right. I think you were right, Dave. You hit on something there. (laughs) The universe. I win. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, No, I think think if Tua falls, the Patriots could jump in. And I wonder if they would dangle their first in 2021 to do it. I think they should wait until the second round and take Jake Fromm. And I think Jake Fromm could be a good quarterback in this system. So Dave wants to do something fun. And I think we have Jamie back. He was just was sick and tired of talking about the Bucks. Dave wants to do a quick rookie mock draft. We each get three picks to make up round one. Who's in? Why are we only doing one round? We should definitely do two rounds. No, we should definitely do I'm just fine with two. One round. Two, two rounds. One IDP. Round. We fit, we fit Super flex. Point, we hit that point in the Twitch conversation that we're, we're already stuck for content. <laughs> it was fun. I, I could take the first three picks if that's, you know, that's easy enough. Um, all right, I'll take the first pick. And uh, I'm actually, I'm going to take, I'm going to take CD Lamb. I am super excited about Lamb and Judy in particular. I'm going to take CD Lamb number one. Wait, wait, wait. So what's the order? Uh, um, alphabetical order. Adam, Dave, H, I, Heath, Jamie. Okay. <laughs> Dave, go so ahead. So I'm up next. You're yeah. giving me Jonathan Taylor at 1.02. I'm taking him. Okay. Heath? No, wait. Yeah, Heath. <laughs> Are you kidding? Uh, J.K. Dobbins. Jamie? Um, I'm going to make a trade with myself. So with the eighth pick, I'm trading up to the fourth pick. We're swapping second round picks. They'll still be the same player. Um, I'll take uh, DeAndre Swift. Okay, so that's three running backs. I guess I'm going to have to take Jerry Judy now at five overall. Uh, Is this a PPR pretend rookie first round mock draft? Not PPR. I think you make it uh, three PPR. I will take so Justin Jefferson. Oof. Um, I, that surprises me. I'm going to go with Cam Akers. I will take uh, the man with three names. Clyde. Edwards. Mm. Dude's slow. He's slow, Jamie. Four he points. Forty. He's faster than you, Azer. You've never, seen, you've never seen me on the kickball field, Dave. You'd be surprised. He would pummel you. I probably would be surprised if you could kick the ball out. How many yards could he run in the time it took Adam to run 40 yards? <laughs> At least 65. Oh, he'd run a full football field before he got to 40. Really? Uh, I, think, uh, I think 670, 65 to 70. That's probably I said 65. Yeah, 65 to 70 is probably right. He could, run, he could run two football fields before I get to 40 yards. I got to give Adam a lot more credit than I would give myself. I'm going to take the other Alabama wide receiver. I will take Ruggs. So with my three picks on three separate teams, I've taken the top three receivers. Oh, no. You took Jefferson, Dave. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's right. So uh, Ruggs, there. ninth overall. So this is a tough one for me. Do I go with uh, Do I go with Rager, who I like a lot, or do I go with Burrow? I'm going to go with Joe Burrow, who I think is going to be a great quarterback for a long time. Um. I'll take Tua, who I think might actually have the most upside at quarterback in this draft. How many rounds are we going? This I think is this is the last, last pick. pick. Two, last rounds. Pick. Two rounds. Two rounds. This is the end of round one. This is where Jamie takes Van Jefferson, just to have a Gator in the top twelve. The 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 chat says they want two rounds. Um, uh, I don't what? chat questions. Let's see. Um, I will go with. Uh, Denzel Mims. Nice. Yeah, up that, there for sure. Love it. All right. So here's what I want to know. You know, you look at, at rookie wide receivers and how do they do in fantasy? 
you know, it's it's you get contributors, but you usually don't get game changers in their rookie year. Um, running back, you certainly do. But let's just go back and look at the last five years at the rookie wide receivers. Amari Cooper in 2015 was number 23. This is a non-PPR. Michael Thomas was top 10. Tyreek Hill was 15th uh, in 2016. 2017, Juju Smith-Schuster was 17th. Cooper Cup was 27th. 2018, Calvin Ridley was 18th. Nobody else was good. 2019, A.J. Brown was 10th in non-PPR. He was 21st in PPR. We did not have a top 20 wide receiver last year. Uh, as from the rookies in in PPR in non PPR we had one. So what I want to know is how our our uh, Twitch followers and viewers here are feeling about this class of rookie wide receivers. Do you think we've got superstars there? Do you think we could have a Michael Thomas who finished as the number nine wide receiver uh, in his rookie season? And Tyree Kill was was pretty high, high as well. Um, you know, do do you think it's better than last year's crop, which was really good? But not no superstars except for AJ Brown, I guess, in non PPR, and that was for half the season. So, let us know what you think. I'm gonna I'm gonna read your comments here, and uh, we will get to those. Let's see, there's the question asked. Do you think we have a superstar wide receiver in this class? And then I'm also gonna look at Ryan Wilson, who you heard on uh, Monday's episode, his mock draft, and where the wide receivers went there. So let's talk about that real quick, guys. Um, you should see the way that Gronk is looking behind your neck. Like, it looks like Gronk's getting ready to stab you in the back. <laughs> can we, can we uh, pay fake Gronk to stab him? <laughs> I can probably figure that out on the green screen. Uh, all right, so I'm going to pull up the results. Sorry, just give me a moment here. Let me read a, a few of the Twitch comments so you guys can react. CD Lamb is an OG. Uh, probably aiming at Judy with the third pick in my rookie dynasty draft. Nobody's going to stand out in their rookie year, but in the future for sure. Lots of solid guys, no one elite. Maybe not in the 2020 season, but going forward, or at least there, I think there are at least five wide receiver ones in this draft. Mims will be a beast. All right, so overall, I think people have have uh, measured expectations for 2020, but high expectations overall. What do you guys think? Uh, I don't think there's five wide receiver ones in this draft. I think we'll be lucky if there's more than two, but I, I agree about Lamb and Judy, man. I think that they are really, really talented receivers, and I think they both have a chance to eventually be regular 120 target getters in the NFL. Well, what, what, what do you what do you think is the outlook? Like project a year from now with Brown, Metcalf, McLaurin. Um, I don't know if there's anybody better than those three. Like, could they potentially be top 15 fantasy receivers? I mean, another, Metcalf, yes. If they have another Born, year like this? Maybe. I mean, if they well, have obviously, year, if they have another year, they can Right, so, they can be. so I, I think that's the, the question you have to ask about these guys because you're going to see Lamb and Judy probably in some unfavorable spots. I mean, you know, if you just look at where the mock drafts are, the Jets are not the best situation. The Raiders are not the best situation. Now, quarterback could change for the Raiders by 2021. Jets, who knows what's their long-term status with their coach. So, you know, that could certainly change the outlook for their long-term future. But 2020 doesn't seem very favorable if that's the case for those guys. Now, conversely, the Eagles receiver is probably going to be pretty good if they get a guy. The Packers will be pretty good if they get a guy. You know, so it could be a situation where, like we had with Nikhil Harry and Marquise Brown, where Brown was good, Harry stuck, and we'll see what happens, you know, moving forward. But the second-tier guys were awesome. Yeah, I, I don't think we have five number ones, but I wouldn't be surprised in three years if this class has got like eight to 10 top 30 wide receivers. Right. Um, it's a very, very deep class. My expectation, unless something major changes in the next month or two, is that this will be the worst year for a rookie receiving class in the last five years. Because of the offseason. Because of the offseason situation. And not just that, though. That's most of it. But also because my expectation right now is that the most likely landing spot for Judy, Lamb, maybe Ruggs, or whoever's third, Jefferson, is Raiders, 49ers, Jets. And those are pretty terrible situations. I disagree with um, a few of the things you said. Good. I, you have to look at the Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore year. Where DJ Moore, I, I think I'll double check this. I think he was the second best wide receiver among the rookies that year. 
What year? And, that was 2018? Yes. And he finished 45th. So that was just a really bad year for rookie wide receivers. But tell me if I'm missing somebody. But that's what I have right now. Um, and then, like, I don't think the Raiders are that bad. And I don't know that the Jets are really I've got DJ Moore 38th, but he was the second or 36th. In PPR? Yes. I have him 45th in non-PPR. Adam, I think the, the point is it's not, it's not that they're bad because they're walking into a lot of targets. That's, that's the upside. I have, I'm optimistic about the Raiders, though, I think, than, than, anyone, than Heath is for sure because I know he and I disagree about how good Derek Carr is. And I just think you, you look back at Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree on the same team, and both of them were top 24 wide receivers in the same season. Yeah. Different, different system. I agree. Yeah, that was back before Carr started seeing ghosts. Yep. Yeah, but he's done it, and you know he, he gave us a great year from Darren Waller. I mean, I know he's a tight end, but he looks like a wide. But receiver. you're still you're you're, ask, you're asking a rookie to come in and be great right away. Like I I, I could see them being good, but I, I don't know if they'll be great right away. No, I think the conversation sort of morphed into something because, like, like, like I mean, go to well, the Raiders just 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 to, just to make make the direct comparison with lesser talent. Hunter Renfro started putting up good numbers by the end of the season. However, you know, fluky it may have been. You know, some of the big plays that aren't necessarily what he would be profiling at, but he still put up numbers. And so. If you put C.D. Lamb on the Raiders, he's their number one guy, uh, including Waller. Is he, so, top, is he a top 24 wide receiver? Not on draft day, but he can certainly get there. It, it'd be a surprise, but he can get there. And I we, feel the same way about Judy if he goes to the Raiders because his routes, I would say he's, got, he's the best route runner in the class. And that's what John Gruden is looking for, guys that can run really perfect routes, grab the ball, make a play after the catch. And it's not like Lamb's a bad route runner, but Judy's a little bit faster in that regard. And I think I think he would almost be a better fit for the Raiders than CD Lamb would be. Because I just I feel like Lamb is just more cut out to be an outside receiver, whereas Judy, and he didn't do this at Oklahoma, Lamb lined up everywhere. But I think Judy can just line up everywhere. Raiders can find mismatches. And they just they look for him inside of 12 yards. Derek Carr makes that throw all the time and wind him up and let him go. And I think, I think of all the teams that we talk about outside of the Eagles, if Judy goes to the Raiders, I'd be pretty excited about that. I think that he would have top 30 fantasy receiver potential. And maybe the way things shake out, he does finish as a top 24 guy. So in Ryan Wilson's mock draft, I'm going to tell you the top something like eight. I'll go through the, to the Jets in round two. He has them taking a wide receiver in round two. And I want you to tell me who the best fantasy wide receiver would be in your rankings in this hypothetical scenario. Lamb to Las Vegas. Judy, San Francisco. Ruggs to Denver. Ayuk to Philadelphia. Jefferson to Minnesota. Mims to Green Bay. Pittman to Indianapolis. And Rager to the Jets. Who's Lamb. the best? Yeah, Lamb. I love Lamb. <laughs> yeah, I would go Lamb. Um, man, Pittman might be second for me. Not Mims. Number two I like guy Mims a second. lot, but like Devontae Adams is going to take thirty percent of the targets. Pittman to the Colts. Yeah, Rager. Rager to the Jets is is pretty interesting. No, it's, that would be the eighth wide receiver off the board. Maybe, maybe I'm a fan of his. He he reminded me of Jerry Judy when I watched him play. But he's gonna play. They, he's gonna play outside there. Yeah, I know. Well, listen, whoever they draft is gonna play outside there the most because Jets have Crowder as long as he's healthy playing on the inside. And I look, I don't think Rager would necessarily be a huge stat monster. He'll have a couple of good weeks, and long term, I think he could end up being the answer there. But he's another. He's he's a good route runner, not as good as Judy, but a good route runner. And I love his second year. He can fly. And he, he had terrible numbers, all things considered, at TCU because he had bad quarterbacks. A lot of these guys did. Go watch Brandon Ayuk's film. He should have had way – he had he had more yards last year than Nikhil Harry had in each of his previous two years at Arizona State, and he should have had way more. I bet he has a pretty good chance of having more yards in his rookie year than Nikhil Harry had. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's get some some questions here on Twitch. And, again, if you're watching – well, yeah, <laughs> you're watching, so hit the follow button. I mean, if you're if you're listening later, don't worry about it because we don't know how you're even doing it. 
<laughs> this is all new to me, so I'm figuring it all out. But hit that follow button. Uh, any questions you want, let's have fun with it, right? It's Tuesday night. It's quarantine time. What are you watching on Netflix or wherever? It's and all Tuesday. Some, some, uh, some football stuff. Dave, I only saw episode one, but how are you feeling so far about uh, The Last Dance? It was the big bull. I, I love it. I'm nostalgic for that stuff. Um, growing up in Chicago, I, I lived through a lot of it and it's, 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 it's great to hear some of the, you know, the inside baseball of it all. Um, but I mean, I don't, I could go on, you don't want to get me started, but I'm a huge, huge mark for Jordan and the bulls and brings back amazing memories and a lot of pride of being a Chicago. Is, is anyone going to come out of this documentary looking better? Because so far, it just seems like they're making everyone look worse. I don't know. I, I don't think Michael's coming out looking bad. Ooh. Scotty, Scotty's coming out <laughs> looking bad for a terrible deal. I don't like, that deal, but he made that. He made that. That deal was bad when he made it. No, not for a terrible deal. Like he, he made a terrible. Oh, I, I know what you're saying. Like he. And sorry, I'm going. Spoiler alert. Just don't listen for the next 15 seconds if you didn't see episode two yet. <laughs> but he admitted that he didn't have surgery over the summer just because he wanted to stick it to the team that was trying to win their sixth title in eight yeah. years just because he was mad about his contract. Like, that doesn't was, make him look good. But that, yeah. I don't think that was the worst part about it. I think the worst part was that he demanded the trade, which, I mean, yeah, you know, you, you, this is, you know, I don't think it's not new. Anything. We we hear about that stuff all the time. <laughs> right. I'm back. But there are a lot of athletes that do that stuff, though. Gronk I mean, just did it. A.J. Green did it. Gronk just went to the Patriots and said, I'm going to unretire. You're either going to keep me and you got to pay me for this year, or you have to trade me to Tampa Bay and no place else. Players are certainly, they know how to dictate. They know how to get leverage for where they want to do, for where they want to go. That's what I should say. Where okay. Go. People are watching Community. And yeah, Adam, that- Adam just, just so you know, in episode two, Michael died. They had to bring him back to life. <laughs> <laughs> He's so mean to Jerry Krause, though. Like all the short jokes. He deserved it. He was terrible. Uh, Jerry Krause was the Adam Azer of the Bulls. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that is that is offensive to Adam Azer. I think that was what I, he was I going still for. I still can't stand Jerry Krause. I still can't stand Adam Azer. <laughs> but I the think funny, that, the funny thing is, like, if if Jerry Krause just did his job, like the things that he did were amazing. Oh yeah, it's true. He, he did a good job. But I think that. Uh, I think that Jerry Reinsdorf saying that Jerry Krause was one of the nicest, sweetest people he ever met was was a very interesting thing to hear. Uh, it's just funny, the perception. I, Michael Jordan was very mean to him. Okay. Uh, so, oh, how about this question? Is Kelsey or Kittle even worth taking in the first, first 24 picks now that Gronk is in the picture? Yes. Does that change anything? Is that 25 than those uh, other two guys in the first 24? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I'm gonna take Gronk at 25. I just pass on those other two guys. In the oh, first you 25. That's, that'll mm-hmm. work. Cincinnati should trade for OJ Howard and give Burrow another weapon. Um, I don't. Is is OJ Howard like? When did he become this amazing tight end? I know. Um, I Dave, he's one of the most talented tight ends in the history of the NFL. Based arguably, on, based on most. that stat, right? You've got a stat where he's what is it? What is, is it? Is um, it yards per target? Based yards on Adam run. Azer's talent evaluation, which I trust above all other talent evaluations. He I think he's going to be really us. good. He just got to get in the right situation. Dude. I think he is really good. And his yards per target are better than Gronk's. Look at his scouting reports going into the NFL draft. Like there, there's a reason why he was taken as a top 20 pick. He was yeah. being talked about as a – he was a great prospect, and he still is a great yeah. prospect. And, and Ben Gretsch, I think, will tell you his yards per target is, has been absolutely off the charts. So I, I think he is super no, talented and just needs to be freed. I agree with you 100%, Adam. I think Tampa Bay made a mistake giving up a fourth-round pick for a tight end that is, at his current state, probably worse than O.J. Howard. It's possible. and They did it to appease their quarterback. And, and, and Jamie, um, we talked to Greg Allman, and he mentioned the drops at the beginning of the season, and I think that he kind of said, you know, that, Maybe they lost a little faith in him in OJ Howard, but it seems like the early struggles kind of derailed him. So there, there, there's a there's there's a story that's been told that when they went on their bye week after I think it was their trip to London that 
uh, Arians told all the guys to stay in shape and he didn't. And he came back and he pulled his hamstring. And from that point on, it was kind of like, like you care, you know? And so um, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but um, look, you, you see this a lot when you have a coach player pairing that doesn't work for whatever reasons. And, and, and again, I'll go back to what I said before. Arians is just not a tight ends guy. He, he said that he's like, you know, he, he'd rather throw to his running backs. He'd rather use a tight end as a blocker. And that, and that I think is a part of this too. Grok is one of the best blocking tight ends we've ever seen. Yep. And so he helps that offensive line. He helps that offense in general. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a safety blanket for Brady in more ways than one. But, um, you know, I think Howard could be one of these guys that gets a fresh start someplace else. And he may never fulfill his potential, but he could still be a good fantasy tight end. And I'd like to see it. Uh, we have some questions here from, well, we got some JK Dobbins questions. Uh, is, is last dance a Christmas movie? <laughs> but that was pretty funny. According to everybody else on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the running backs now. We talked about wide receivers, talked about Gronkowski. How about these rookie running backs getting ready for them? Uh, J.K. Dobbins from Brohio 2. Thoughts on Dobbins? Could you see him slipping to the Steelers in the second round? Yes. Sure. I could see him falling that far. I, the thing that I have a hard time with are the Steelers, like, they have one pick in the first 90. Are they going to use yep, that on a, 49. On, on a running back? It, it seems kind of odd, right? You don't think they would. But it, I think it, if there's a guy that they really love, then they would. It, Maybe it's funny Dobbins would be that guy. It's a position of need to a degree, but it's not a position of necessity for them because they could get by with what they have with, with Roethlisberger back. Right. So They'd let's have see to where, really be in love with him. To take. See where Ryan uh, Wilson has these running backs going. Uh, second round, starting with Swift, who's his favorite, going to the Bucks. Hey. Uh, and then Jonathan Taylor to the Steelers. And then Dobbins to the Bills. Gosh, that would drive me crazy. Oh, I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, Edwards Hilaire to the Dolphins. Akers to the Ravens. And Moss to the Lions. Those are his top six. Swift to the Bucks. Taylor to the Steelers. Dobbins to the Bills. Edwards Hilaire to the Dolphins. Cam Akers to the Ravens. And Zach Moss to the Lions. Uh, Dave, when you hear that, those six. What's Sign your- me up for Swift. Yeah, but sign me up for DeAndre Swift. And I think Edwards Hilaire might be the second best. Um, look, Taylor and Pittsburgh wouldn't be so bad either. You just gotta wait for James Conner to get out of the way. And then once that happens, he could he could be outstanding. And maybe that happens really early on in the year. Who knows? But uh I really love the idea of Swift and Tampa now. That would be that would be amazing. Adam, we've got another question in the chat about running backs. If you had a bad dynasty team and wanted to rebuild what would you feel about trading all of your players for the first and second picks and then renaming your team Taylor Swift? Yeah. <laughs> I, I would only, yeah, I got to see the landing spots there, but I think that would be pretty funny. Uh, probably not a great idea, but here's one from P Dugas 21. Would, who do you prefer Taylor to the bucks or Swift to the chiefs? What would you be more excited about Taylor to the bucks or Swift to the chiefs? Taylor. Taylor. Taylor for 2020, Swift maybe 2021. All right. If we have anything else here. No, that is not Greg Allman from the Allman Brothers. Uh, all right, we'll see. Let's, let's get a few more. Let's get a few more um, a few more uh, running back questions, if you guys don't mind. Team name Tuesday. Uh, remember, the Yak Daddy or the Daddy Yak. We don't know yet, but that's what we're calling CD Lamb. Let's just let's just run with it. Uh, quarterbacks: Joe Burrow to Cincinnati. This is the mock draft. Joe Burrow to yet. Cincinnati. Miami getting Tua at five. Uh, Herbert to the Jaguars at twenty. Love Boo. To- <laughs> what? <laughs> Boo. There's no way. There's it. It hurts to the Patriots. Uh, that would be fun. Hurts to the Patriots in the third round. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Fromm's yeah. a better fit there. Sure. Um, Will Will Brinson brought this up on our mock draft on Monday, our our NFL mock draft. Um, I believe he said that with the compensatory picks and when they count or don't count, that if a team signs a player after April 27th, they don't have to give up any compensatory picks. And he thinks that's what the Patriots could be waiting for with Cam Newton or Jameis Winston. Or any team for that matter. 
Did I read it? Was it there a rumor that the Patriots were interested in Dalton? That the hot Patriots are definitely rumored to be interested in Dalton. Yeah. Why wouldn't they be? Uh, how about this question from it's about Antonio Gibson uh, from Mega Ballers Stud Farm? Thoughts on where? Oh, that's my account. Sorry. <laughs> where does Antonio Gibson end up? Is he a true running back? No, but it doesn't matter. He could end up being a 30 catch, 30 carry guy as a rookie and maybe grow on that a little bit in his second year. He's pretty versatile. He's, he's a pretty, pretty good scat back type. Better, better Ty Montgomery. We have better a team Ty named Montgomery. Uh, Carol Baskin Dobbins. That's not bad. But also from TTV Shaner01, do you think Aaron Jones's workload will change much this year? It's a good question because his workload with Jamal Williams, healthy, not including the week 16 and 17, his workload was alarming. His workload, if he gets the same workload that he got last year, I think Aaron Jones is going to be a bust as a first round pick. I see him going in the first round, a lot of our drafts, uh, maybe early second. He was just scored a lot of touchdowns, basically. And also his catches. When Devontae Adams was on the field, didn't catch nearly as many passes as he did when Adams was off the field. So I think he needs a workload increase to live up to his ADP. Do you guys think Aaron Jones will get that workload increase? No. I mean, you heard good. LaFleur talk about it. He wants to use three running backs. Last year, he only really had two. I, th I think Jones is hella talented, though. I think he's a really good running back. And he's in a really good system. I think the Packers still want to run the ball a lot. He's... Can he keep up the touchdown pace that he had last year and the year before? And if you think the answer to that question is yes, and it very well might be, then he's worth a top 20 choice. And if you think the answer is no, then you don't even think twice about it. I think the answer is no, personally. And and yeah. what did he have, five games with uh, three or fewer fantasy points and non PPR? He was sure. one of the, you know, I, Heath, what do you think about Aaron Jones? Because if you don't think there's going to be more work, what is what? How concerned would you be? Do you think he's? You think what I'm saying is legit? He's a bust in the first or early second round? I don't think he's a bust in the second round. I think he's a bust, possibly like a mini bust. Like I don't think he'll deliver on expectations of a, as a first round pick. I I haven't taken him there. Um, the thing about his touchdowns is that he's pretty much always scored a bunch of touchdowns, and the Packers are going to score a bunch of touchdowns, and they ran a ton inside the 10 yard line. And so I don't worry so much. There's going to be some touchdown regression. Thank you very much. But there's not going to be the type of touchdown regression. I'd worry about with other running backs. And I do think he gets a little bit more work. <laughs> the soundtrack of Heath Cummings. That was awesome. <laughs> Number two. All right. Uh, God, Twitch is fun, by the way. Uh, how about another question here? We'll go back to the back to the Twitch board. Does Joe Mixon's value go up with a rookie quarterback under center? And Jamie, what do you think? Joe Mixon value up down to the same with Joe Burrow. I think the same. You know, I'm excited about Jonah Williams coming back. I think it's going to help the offensive line. AJ Green coming back. I think it's going to help the offense in general. So, you know, Mixon was amazing in the second half last season. And I think, you know, you get a little more stability with the quarterback because he did that with Dalton and Finley and that wasn't very good. Um, so hopefully Burrow is, you know, at least on the, for now, and I know this probably sounds funny, but on the low end of the Andy Dalton factor, you know, bad Dalton um, for Burrow to start. And then he progresses to better than Dalton, hopefully by leaps and bounds. Um, but I think the, just the offense as a whole is going to be fine. So um, I'm, I'm excited about mixing, you know, the, the thing I, I was looking forward to him last year was what Zach Taylor and, and the Rams offense was obviously great for Gurley. Uh, would it be, you know, the same for, for Mixon and, I think we saw the potential of what it could be. Mixon or Aaron Jones, guys? Mixon. Aaron Jones. Mixon. And you all have Mixon ahead of Miles Sanders? Yes. Yeah. I do. For now. You change your mind. I'll, I'll, you'll come around before the season starts. I'm what sorry. Do you do when, they, when they had a running back, how, how are you going to feel then? Won't matter. Won't no matter. What? It's just depth. That's all it is. Dave has turned into a shadow of his old self. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Dave? You're like running away from the snake. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, my, my neighbor was mowing his lawn. I was trying to avoid the sound of that. So 
trying to find a different spot here to All set right. up Next shop. Time we do this, everybody do it outside, I'd say. Outside. Heath outside, Jamie outside. I wanted to read something from – I'll stay inside. You're going to uh, take your tent outside too? From CBS. This is a green screen. It's not a tent. From CBSSports.com, there was a great article interviewing a guy named Duke Mannyweather. He's an offensive line coach. He's a private yeah. offensive line coach working yeah. with uh, Mikai Becton and, and several others. And he gave a breakdown of the entire class, basically. Uh, but you, I want you to read that article. It's really interesting. But you know, one thing that stood out from, uh, from the article, this is just from, I don't know who wrote it for us, but whoever wrote the article. The hype surrounding this tackle class is real. However, it may not translate to immediate impact. There are only four current offensive tackles, 26 years or younger, that have made at least one Pro Bowl appearance. On average, it has taken those four players 3.75 seasons to make their first Pro Bowl appearance. So that was one thing I looked at was what kind of impact an early first-round offensive lineman can have. And I went back to the last five years, and, I, and like I said on the podcast on men, Monday, the guys who were taken in the top 15 or 16 are, are, are by and large really good players, but it's unclear what impact they had on the offense in the first year. So there are going to be those four tackles could all go on the top 15 and that's great, but I'm not sure we should sit there and say, well, the giants added this guy, the Jaguars added this guy. It's going to make a huge difference. It probably won't this year. So I just want to throw that out there. I don't even know if we need any analysis. We could try to go back, uh, read some questions here. Tell us uh, another story. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mind of, uh, um, oh, there we go. Mind of Nico. Mindo? What the hell? Mind of Nico. Should I skip out on Patrick Mahomes to get Tom Brady later? Depends yeah, if, if it means not taking him up. Right. Who wants Mahomes with an early round pick? Well, a lot of people would, but. I would. I, not, I not would rather one. have Mahomes in the third than Brady in the seventh. Uh, agreed. Yeah, I think they, I agree they with they that. Agree that way. Who are the top five quarterbacks this year, fantasy wise? Roethlisberger. The top, the top two are locked in. I think it's once we get to three is where it becomes fun. Drew Lock. <laughs> uh, I will go Mahomes, Lamar, Dak, Eli Manning, Watson. What about Peyton? Wilson. Peyton retired. Come on. Watson and Wilson. Where's Kyler? Uh, I've um, got him third. He's going to make a massive leap from outside the top 12 to sixth. Outside the top 12 in terms of where he finished? On a fantasy points per game basis, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, from Nash Wave 29, do the Lions trade down from three and do the Saints go with a quarterback? At I say point, yes and no. The Saints may look at a quarterback. Uh, the Lions certainly could trade down, but I don't see it happening. I think it happens. They should. They you're starting to hear that Patricia may be in love with Simmons. That'd be interesting. Boy, is he a fascinating prospect? He I is. I spoke to him today on. Uh, How was on, he? On what did... He was great. I mean, you know, he uh, he doesn't really care what position he plays. He just thinks he's going to dominate wherever he goes. Well, but he also compared himself to Derwin James, so that's sort of telling. That's, I think yeah. if there's one thing wow. we've learned, it's the Lions are going to make the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> And the Giants, you guys know how many times Dave Gettleman's traded down in the yeah. NFL draft? He's never. He never has. You know the last time that I said, don't I've worry, said he's this? Taking, I don't, he's taking Justin Herbert at four. Yeah, right. Do you know the last time the Giants drafted a linebacker in the first round? Lawrence Taylor. A little bit after that. Carl Banks, <laughs> 1984. Worked out well? It did, yeah. You think maybe they do it again, but I, I don't think they will. Uh, here's from David Lee 217. Does Rivers give T.Y. Hilton more value since he targeted Keenan Allen so often? Yes. Yes. Eh. Of course he does. But how much value? Like, it, could you see a scenario where you're drafting a rookie wide receiver ahead of T.Y. Hilton? No. Yes. Yes. What would that scenario be, Dave and Jamie? C.D. Lamb to the Eagles. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. That would be that would be the, the 
a dream come true. I will you, agree. I will agree to that. I just didn't have the imagination to see it. When, <laughs> and that may end up being a mistake, but I, I would still draft it that way and rank it that way. When, uh, when the Niners draft the wide receiver, <clears throat> how big of a deal do you think that's going to be for Debo Samuel and George Kittle? Bad for Debo. Nothing changes for Kittle. Agreed. What round are we talking about? Because they've got the two first rounders, and then they don't pick again until round five. And they're well, very a, a, about wanting to trade out. From yeah, one they, they definitely want to trade out. Right. So sure, they trade out around one, and then they get one of the guys in round two or three. It'll impact those. It'll impact Kittle and Debo. It's, but if it's a field stretcher like Mims or Rager or Ayuk, for example. That'll open things up underneath for Kittle and Debo. It's uh, it's going to be very fascinating to see because you know if you if you're following the rugs buzz and how teams are falling in love with him, if he's the first receiver drafted, where he goes, and if somebody like is aggressive to go get him, because you yeah. know I I don't I don't I think it's unfair, but you know the Tyree Kill comparison, I mean that's the player that he profiles the most as, and he's going to surprise a lot of people that he can do a bunch of different things. He's not just a field stretcher; he's more than that. But, um, you know, if he if he ends up in San Francisco, you know, I think you may sort of get this feeling of oh, oh, Debo is is maybe a little bit safer. I, I don't know if that's the case. Is it possible that a general manager get burned by rugs? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me if I could explain what's going on behind me. I have a green screen. I'm having a lot of fun with the green screen. <laughs> you replaced Michael Jordan with Heath. Yeah, you know, slightly. Who goes? Right, that great. Um, so I can put whatever I want on there. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite fit the screen perfectly. Well, but... you're so tall. <laughs> you're just too much. You're too tall for the uh, screen. <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. Stuff being this tall. Um, and uh, Parkland says Jamie's hair looks great, comma jealous. Uh, Jamie has great hair, it's, so you shouldn't be surprised. My hair's a little. I definitely need a haircut. I. That, I mean, I want to drive to Georgia right now. Just go get a haircut. <laughs> What are you? Are you gonna let your wife cut your hair? Is anybody no. gonna let your wife cut? No, their hair? no chance. I'll let everybody else's wife cut their hair. <laughs> I might. I, I might. Mine cut mine. It's getting crazy. Um, Jerry Nelson. Jerry says, "Dave Richard, what's up? What's up, Jerry? How's it going, dude? Do you know Jerry? I do. Oh, okay." Jerry and I, Jerry and I went to elementary school together at Arcadia Elementary, and uh, we used to sit at the same lunch table all the time. We talked about, you know, which team was better: Cubs, White Sox, Ryan Sandberg, Harold Baines. Um, yeah, me and me and me and Henry go way back. Cool, man. Um, I we got ten minutes left in this, so hit that follow button. Can we do another rookie us? draft. Let's do round two. Let's do an and- old man draft. Dave, did you explain why you have Stefan Diggs as a wide receiver three yet? Because we were getting a question about that. Because I think he'll, I don't think he'll be much better than he was last year in Buffalo. Might be worse. Don't, I like 24 receivers better than Diggs. I have uh, recently, I've recently adjusted my uh, projections. I don't know if the rankings reflect it yet or not, but uh, I agree with Dave. He's outside my top 24. Jamie Diggs, he's just inside. I think he's still a number two receiver. Heath, what you drinking? Uh, currently, Centennial from Founders. It's uh, it's a great, great deal. Fifteen packs. You get fifteen at once. <laughs> yeah, who through, needs twelve packs? Uh, get like get a you sucker. through a couple of days of quarantine. Jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, Gronkowski top five tight end asks Sam Lop five. For the Bucks. No. <laughs> <For> the Bucks. <laughs> no. Ooh, uh, that Nike boy said, I look like a little Romo. You guys agree? Do I look like Tony Romo? A little bit. If Romo got punched in the face a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and, by the way, people don't know what this. Is that? Same salary, me and Tony Romo. Same salary. We have a lot in common. They do. Yeah. Uh, you know, Forbes released the list of the top CBS employees, and it was Romo and then you. Head of Nance. You, you should oh, be really? impressed. From Farah, uh, if A.J. Green stays healthy all year and Burrow starts every game, does A.J. Green still have top 12 upside? Yes. 
that much. Uh, upside, yes. I, I think we got to be really careful with Burrow because like in a normal year, the odds are against a rookie quarterback being good, even the 1.1. And then this year, I think the odds are really against Burrow being good, but the upside is there, yes. I, just, I, I can't wait to find out what the offseason is going to be like. You know, once, once we get past the draft and, you know, they've already missed out on one, you know, uh, with, with the, we're, we're going to miss out on one mini camp scenario. Um, you know, what's it going to be like for these guys and for the, you know, the young players, especially in the guys that have switched teams. It's going to be so interesting to see how, how much time they actually get to spend together on the field. A question from uh, mine uh, from David Lee again, does Jamie have Legos behind him? I do. I do. They're not um, Legos. I think they're Oxos is what they're called. Um, so was it? I don't see um, let me see that Oh, this is Derrick Henry. You see him? Oh, cool. I thought he oh. was bigger. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have uh, Andrew Luck, Carson Wentz, Derrick Henry, Matthew Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, Dolphins, Ryan Tannehill, Adam Thielen, Zach Ertz, and then on this side, um, uh, Alabama, O.J. Howard, Jamal Adams, uh, Alshon Jeffrey, Chiefs, Jamal Charles, Joe Hayden. A few other guys there. Nice. Joe Hayden has not uh, a figurine from the Browns. Wow. So they, they must've run out of people that do figurines. on. <laughs> oh, I think this is a good question here from Ed, the tech thoughts on replacing the dedicated tight end spot in redraft leagues with a flex spot. No. What's Hate the problem it. with it? Heath? Why not? Um, it's not like tight end is kicker. There are some really definitively good tight ends and it creates more strategy when you have to choose between drafting one of those good tight ends or taking a lottery pick later. Yeah. Why would you, getting rid of the tight end is just so, it takes so much strategy out of fantasy. I hate it. I hate so much strategy. I don't think it takes that much strategy out of it. So you don't start a tight end. I prefer tight tight end premiums. Tight end premium is better. I don't have a problem with either one. I don't think it changes. Replace the tight the end with a kicker and Heath will love game. it. Dual kickers, yes. So uh, from Sam Lap 5, Ozark or Tiger King, what's your favorite? Heath, I think you're probably the only one who's watched both. That's not even kind of close. Ozark, or, like, Tiger King was a thing that we all watched for a short period of time and then felt a little bit bad about. Ozark is one of the greatest television series to be created in the last five years. I'm, I'm excited to start it. Uh, I just recently finished Breaking Bad. So oh, uh, I, oh I was, well, let's get your, let's get your uh, compared to Game of Thrones. So different. Uh, Breaking Bad is better. Yeah. But so different. Um, so I was debating. Uh, I'm, I don't know, Heath, if you're a uh, Better Call Saul guy. Um, but I was debating which to start first, Ozark or Better Call Saul. Ozark. I... I'm gonna, like this will be an unpopular opinion. Um, I started Better Call Saul, but it really wasn't my thing, so mm-hmm. I did not finish the first season of that. I love Ozark. The thing, yeah. the thing I was told, uh, and I think it was Will Brinson who told me because he's watched both and loves both as well, uh, Ozark and, and Better Call Saul. He said, um, "Go right to Better Call Saul because you'll catch all the Easter eggs from Breaking Bad, um, and and catch up on that first. So, um, yeah, the thing is like. First of all, the way I am with Miles Sanders is the way Will is with Better Call Saul. He's the highest in the industry on Better Call Saul. No, he loves Ozark too. He he, he absolutely loves Ozark. But Ozark. He did say better. He did say Better Call Saul is, is better than Breaking Bad, which I'm highly doubtful. Right, and he's watched more of it than I have because I gave up after I think three seasons. But it's basically a lawyer show, <laughs> Dave. Why are you doing that? Because I'm walking away from the conversation. It's basically a show about lawyers. I'm sure it's going to get to like the good stuff at some point. But I almost want to watch Better Call Saul now because you walked you walked away from Homeland. No, it's, and- good. it's good. Better Call Saul is good. I just I couldn't dedicate my life to it anymore because it wasn't great. Ozark is great. Ozark is a must watch. And Ozark is really- three, three seasons, right? Th- yeah, they just and released- Better Call Saul is in its fifth season now, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've really spent way too much time thinking about Azer as the play-by-play guy and me doing color. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
from Nash Wave 29, player that you are most interested to see where he is drafted. Tua. Joe Burrow. Mims. Um, AJ Dillon. Hmm. I, Tua, I'm, I'm all about Tua. Should I, think, I give a real Tua, answer? Tua is the key of the first round right now. Yes, Dave. I want DeAndre Swift. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Oh, this is a good one from the franchise 305. Would you rather be fluent in every language or have anything that you consume be healthy and nutritious for you? Anything that you consume be healthy and nutritious for you? How could that be anything but the answer? That sounds, that sounds great. Um, fluent in any language. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, Heath. You just went to New York for the first time last year. You never leave the country. Where, where are you going to need more languages? I think I can, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can monetize being fluent in any language. And As a fantasy guy? Anything. <laughs> well, I, I, I could be anything if I'm fluent in any language. I don't have to limit myself. All right. Uh, Spend the rest and, of your time in quarantine learning French. And let's see how far that gets you. <laughs> from Davin Fair, brother, can we address two as Wonderlick? It was quite low. But not much lower than like John Elway's and Dan Marino's, I believe. But are you guys yeah. concerned about Tua's Wonderlick? You loved. I mean, Tua could do anything. He can punch you in the face right now, and you would still love this guy. What is your infatuation? I would love him too. <laughs> <laughs> My infatuation with him is it's that um, it's that I when I watched him when he was healthy, I thought like, wow, this is the next superstar quarterback of the NFL. So I just think it's really interesting that uh, that he may. I don't know. I feel like he's back. His momentum is back on the upswing, but for a while, you know, he was kind you of. Think uh, his momentum on the upswing. Re- recently, yes. I, oh, I think. I think it's, it's top. It's, I think it's going to go low as it's possibly been. No, absolutely not. I mean, when he broke his hip, like not long after the injury, we didn't know what what the future held for well, him. You, I, really obviously, when he was hurt, but I'm I'm talking about you know since he's been deemed healthy. Yeah, I think there's a chance the Patriots could trade up to like twenty and get him. I think the Dolphins take him at three or five, wherever they. That's what I think, I agree with you, Adam. Yeah. And that's that's my infatuation with him, Jamie, because because you're a Dolphins fan. He was the number one prospect going into the season, and now there's so much debate about what he is, when he's going to get drafted. That I just think if he if he gets past six, he's going to fall. Maybe he could become Aaron Rodgers. You know, that'd be great. All right, I think we're done here. Oh, this was fun. This was great. Thanks, yeah. guys. Cool. I'll get hit the follow button. And thank you so much for joining us here on Twitch. And uh, I don't know. We'll do it again. We'll do it again soon, hopefully. We'll talk about it and uh, figure it out. On the podcast this week, we got a Saquon Barkley interview, Scott Pioli. Actually, that one's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to hearing that one. Um, Dario Gubawale recorded last week. We're going to have some fun on Wednesday night. It's, I think it's me, Dave, and Ben Gretsch. And then um, that one will air on Thursday along with the Saquon interview. Then we're going to have reaction on Thursday night, Friday night, and probably Saturday night from the <laughs> NFL. Thank you to Heath, to Dave, to Jamie, to the other Jamie who set this up for us, to Shraggy B, and of course to all of you for watching. I'm Adam. We'll talk to you on the podcast. Thanks, everyone. Want more of the Fantasy Football Today podcast and nonstop year-round fantasy advice? It's simple. Hit the subscribe button and hang with us all throughout the year.